Saving America, one entrepreneur at a time. It's the Biz Rap Podcast with your host, Michael Manahan. The show that celebrates small business and entrepreneurs, it's Biz Rap Radio with your host, small businessman, educator, and author, Michael Manahan. And welcome to another edition of Biz Rap Radio. It's your host, Michael Manahan. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. This, of course, is the show that's all about small business and entrepreneurs. We're the show that's out there fighting for the small business people in America. Nobody else seems to be doing it. It seems between the government, the big business, and the banks, there's full-out war on small business. But, of course, we are the drivers of the economy. We provide most of the jobs in this country. Most people work for small businesses. And this show is out there to help you, the small businessman, or the small businessman to be, or entrepreneur to be, to help you run your business more effectively, to help you make more profits. That's what it's all about. That's why we're in business. No, it's not a dirty word. It's a great word. You want to make more money so you can take care of yourself. You can take care of your family. You can take care of your friends and neighbors and have a little fun along the way. You know, business isn't supposed to be all drudgery. One of the reasons we do work for ourselves is there are some advantages. We have a little more personal freedom, perhaps. If we do well, we can we can maybe do some things we couldn't do otherwise if we were working for somebody else. So listen to the show, learn some things, and, and do a better job of running your business. Make a little bit more money. Uh, now, this week, I've got a very interesting gentleman. He's on the line with me. His uh, name is Robert Fox. He is the CEO of PeopleSource International. Uh, Robert, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Mike. Um, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, not a problem. Now, Robert, what to PeopleSource International, um, what, what exactly is PeopleSource International? Right. So what PeopleSource International is is a virtual assistant company. And we do that by maximizing our clients' efforts through getting a lot of the kind of tasks that really as an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be putting your hands on it, but you either don't have the skill set or you can't afford to hire somebody to, to, to do it. PeopleSource International comes in and we help our clients with that. And there's three basic areas that we really concentrate on, one being our virtual assistant services, which can take care of everything from bookkeeping to social media, data entry, helping you maintain your calendar, you know, making appointments for you, following up, doing all the types of things that a, that a virtual or personal assistant would do for you. Then our second group is our contact center. And our contact center, we do outbound traditional telemarketing calls and also inbound customer service, order taking, that type of group. And then our third group is our website and um, app development group. And we can develop very basic websites that are you know, a few pages and a couple hundred dollars, or we can develop very elaborate custom sites with membership and shopping carts and all the you know, accoutrements that come with your more elaborate designs. Wow, that 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 is that is a lot of stuff. I, let's talk about the you know the, the virtual assistant thing. Really sounds. I think wh where were you when I needed you? I I probably still need you. <laughs> uh, no, you know it's 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 as small business people. You know, I think back. I've worked in some large corporations in my career. Mm -hmm. I was chief financial officer of a division of Steelcase, multi-billion dollar corporation. I worked mm. for a division of the Cummins Engine Company. And you have so many people in organizations like that. You've got every little small task is assigned to somebody. And so everything seems to get done. But when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have a hundred people working for you. So you've mm. got to try and do all of this stuff yourself. And, and invariably, we drop the ball. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I just did something. I feel ashamed about this. I just completed all of the, the information that I needed to complete so I could file my 2013 tax returns. 
So I'm late. Mm. Now I'm going to get a penalty from the IRS. And, yeah. you know, my, my, yeah. my accountant who's, uh, who's uh, you know, does my taxes, she says, well, why did you delay so long? Why didn't you do this six months ago? And, you know, I'm busy. I'm trying to run a radio show. I teach, I teach school. I do consulting. Right. I, I've got a thousand things going, and, and stuff falls through the cracks. And, of course, who really wants to file their tax returns anyways that, you know, the old IRS? The, I don't even want to get started about the IRS because, to me, they're, they're, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I'd almost prefer we had the, the Gestapo from uh, Nazi Germany uh, as opposed to the IRS after us. So that is just uh, an, an amazing. But now— I'm always yeah. I, whenever I hear kind of uh, th- that you you hire another company. H- how do you integrate what I need with the people you have delivering the service? I mean, because often when you right people, and uh, sorry, no, no and, go and, ahead, Robert. Oh, okay, and and that is a really critical aspect of our business is that you get assigned or registered a account manager. And that is basically, or your virtual assistant, that's basically your, your go-to person. Now, is that person going to do 100% of the activities? No. But that's the person that, as far as you're concerned, they're doing 100% of the activities. Because they're assigned to you, you're assigned to them. So it's a very high-level, high-skilled person that is probably just working on your resources or working in a part-time way. But they've got the resources of their entire team underneath them that they're delegating things to, right? So they're making sure that, you know, your monthly statements are all getting reconciled. They're making sure that, you know, the stuff that you ask to be inputted is getting inputted and that the phone calls are getting made because that's your one contact person. So that if at any time one of your team members was to drop out, we just replace them with another team member for you. Unlike going through, um, because there's other ways you can hire people remotely, um, bulletin boards come to mind. For example, you know, Odesk, o, uh, Freelancer, Fiber. These are all examples of bulletin boards. And quite frankly, I think they're great. There's nothing wrong with bulletin boards as long as you're using them properly. And the proper way to use a bulletin board, in my opinion, is if you have a project, like for example, you need some transcription work done, or you have one-off types of task that isn't going to integrate this person into your long-term business objectives, then I think there's nothing wrong with using a bulletin board. It's a great way to find a great resource, and there's a lot of skilled, competent people that hang out on these bulletin boards. The challenge, however, is when a business owner relies in that type of setting and what I hear more times than not is, gosh, I spent so much time getting this guy trained, teaching him everything that he needed to know, and then he disappeared. Because guys, quite frankly, let's be real. These people are freelancing. And when a better job comes along, of course they're going to take it. With PeopleSource International, though, we are your resource. So you teach us how you operate, what things you need to be done. And if one of your team members drops off, we replace that team member seamlessly for you, and it doesn't have an interrupting activity or or, um, event take place in your business. So that's, I guess, uh, to summarize kind of, how we re, um, execute. Does that make sense, Mike? It, it really does. And, and uh, you, by the way, you know, I, I, I'm always telling people I learn so much when I do this radio show. I did not even know there were these bulletin board things you're talking about that you could go oh. to. Uh, I'd never heard of those. So there's actually yeah. now, obviously, you know, I'd, I'd love people to explore what you provide, but but this is something that people should know. Give us the names of a couple of these bulletin boards again, just so that people can uh, sure. maybe look them up. The big the big ones out there are Freelancer, Odesk, and probably Fiber. Fiber. Uh, that, that's and, Freelancer, uh, Odesk, and Fiber. Right. Okay, so uh, look at we're we're coming up on a, on a commercial break here, uh, and we're going to have to uh, 
you know, we're going to have to go to commercials. But this is really interesting. So just very quickly, before we go to commercial break, um, if somebody's interested in your company and your services, Robert, uh, how do they, how, where do they go? How do they get a hold of you? Sure. Um, well, there's a couple ways. They can go to our website, which is peoplesourceinternational.com, or they can call us. And our phone number is 855 774 2013. Okay, fantastic. I am on with Robert Fox, CEO of People Source International, your host, Michael Manahan, BizRap Radio, and we will be back right after these messages. And welcome back to BizRap Radio. It's your host, Michael Manahan. Of course, we're the show all about small business and entrepreneurs. Uh, but right now, we are talking to Robert Fox. He is the CEO of PeopleSource International. And Robert's been telling us uh, how his company can help small business people uh, basically by providing staff to them uh, who will assist them in uh, taking care of a variety of different tasks. And, Robert, you mentioned three areas where you can help people with your company. Just run through those very quickly again for us. Yeah, absolutely. And so one area would be our virtual assistant services, and that's kind of your basic admin. We do QuickBooks. We do social media for clients. Um, we can help you with your email campaigns. If you use Infusionsoft or something similar to that, we can help manage that. Any CRMs that you have, we can help you manage that. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is our contact center. And there we do outbound telemarketing, lead generation, appointment setting, um, that aspect. And also then in our contact center is our inbound desk. And inbound can be customer service, customer support, um, we have even a small taxi cab company that we dispatch fleet for. So there's a wide variety of when that phone's ringing and you want somebody to answer the phone competently, you know, people source can definitely help you with that. And then our third group would be our website and app development group. Okay, so it's quite a host of different services, and I guess each one is kind of priced differently. But uh, and, and I can certainly see the advantage because you know one of the things that that small business people and entrepreneurs have to worry about is if they hire people. Well, you got to worry about uh, you know finding the right people. Um, then then once those mm -hmm. people come on board, you got to train them, and then you got to monitor what they're doing and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then you got to worry about things like vacations and sick time. And and then, of course, they're always going to be wanting more money, so they're going to be coming to you for raises. And then on top of that, our wonderful state and federal governments uh, require you to complete so many different pieces of paper, documents, forms. Mm -hmm. You have to withhold taxes. You've got to be paying taxes to three or four different agencies. And, and you also now, once you start hiring people, you now have to comply with, I think it's somewhere around 50 different uh, uh, legislative um, uh, organizations or groups the government has set mm -hmm. up to, to monitor you, your business, and how you are handling your employees. And then there's the, the records retention. Do you know that if you actually hire somebody and uh and th there are many documents involved with hiring a person that you are obligated to keep not for 5 years not for 10 years but forever and and let's say the uh the IRS comes to audit you and you don't happen to have some of those papers from 20 years ago you can be fined so you know the whole idea of having somebody like you particularly when a business is small they don't have the internal resources to administer all of the the hassle factor that comes along mm -hmm. with employees, this is a great idea. But now I've got a concern because really, and I know we're dancing around this subject a little bit, but 
But this in some ways is, it sounds like outsourcing. And of course, here in the U.S., uh, uh, outsourcing, everybody thinks, oh my, oh my gosh, you know, people are shipping jobs overseas and I pick up my phone to my credit card company and they've got this person talking like this. Hello, this is Ishmael <laughs> from, from Pakistan. How can I help you with your credit card today? Uh, you, you know, are, are these Americans we're dealing with or is all this work being done over well, in India or Pakistan? Well, to, to be perfectly honest with you, it's completely driven by what the client wants. If they want an American workforce, we can supply that with them. All of our phone equipment's in colo facilities in the United States. But we do have an international fulfillment office too, which is obviously a better value-driven proposition. But there's one thing that I really want to take um, and really examine when people say that we're shipping jobs overseas. Guys, the reality is 80% of all small businesses fail in their first two years of operations. Running a small business is one of the hardest things you can possibly do. What we're doing is we're taking small business owners and we're making them competitive and competent and giving you a fighting chance to stay in the game. Now, if you call that shipping, o shipping jobs overseas, fine. But I call that taking small American businesses and making them strong, thriving companies. That's what I call it. So you can paint it any way you want to, but the reality is, guys, the cat's out of the bag. There's going to be international workforce is ingrained into every company at every size. And whether you like it or not, your competition is doing this. So you can sit on the sidelines and you can say, oh, but woe is me, oh, look at what they're doing. Look at, or you can either jump in and say, this is what we've got. Let's take advantage of it and let's make things stronger and build a really, really highly skilled, competent workforce in my company and then the lower skilled job things that I don't have to bring in house, I'm going to let somebody else do that at a fraction of the cost of what I could hire somebody to do it for. Yeah, well, you know, Robert, so that's that, my point. That that is that is an excellent response, and you are so right. I mean, uh, the fact the fact is is it, it is is uh, we need to be competitive as small business people. Our goal is to first and foremost to stay in business. And you need to exactly. do what you need to do to stay in business. And, and I'm all about being competitive and using every tool uh, in, the, in the tool shed, if you will, or every quiver, uh, every arrow in your quiver uh, to be competitive. And, and, and it, part of it is knowledge. You need, to, you need to know the markets. You need to know your customers. Uh, part of it is resources. You, you need to have the resources and know where to find the resources. And it, it's, it's combining those effectively to take care of your customers. It's not an easy job. It's tough being an entrepreneur. You're so right. And, and maybe that's, um, and, and, and as I started at the top of the show, I think it's getting tougher and tougher between government regulation, between the, the banks not wanting to deal with small businesses, you know, when was the last time you heard of a small business actually getting a loan from a bank? Uh, right. You've got uh, government regulations that you've got to comply with, and then you've got the big corporations uh, who qu many of them are, are, quite frankly, happy to see the small business people uh, go under. They have no, no love lost there for the small business people. So it's a competitive environment. You need to explore every avenue and every tool. And you know what? When you're sitting back making millions of dollars as your business becomes a success, then you can take personal responsibility and try and uh, – you know, think about creating more jobs right here in the United States. And, of course, you can always... And, again, it, it's higher-skilled jobs, higher-skilled workforce that you can now afford to hire because that $10, $15 an hour labor, you're getting it for 6 $7 an hour, right? Right, right. So then that extra, extra money, you can invest that in other areas of your business. Um, I really believe that full-heartedly. You are talking to the last guy, I'm sure, in the United States that bought a Zenith television set, okay? <laughs> because there was a time in my life that I was like, buy American, buy America. I don't care about quality. I don't care about anything else. Buy America. And then I bought a Jeep Wrangler, 
And I went down there to try and change the oil on it and found out that all the, all the nuts and screws on it were all matrix. <laughs> and I thought, well, how's that possible? The car that won World War II has to be built in America. And guess what? It's not. That's amazing. Just uh, absolutely amazing. What a story. <laughs> Hey, I remember those Zine of the, T- the Zine of the TVs. We had one of them. Do- <laughs> we had one of them at our, <laughs> at our house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's it. And, and, and by the way, I'm a big Buy American person, too. And, and uh, particularly as we approach the holiday season, I've been urging all of our listeners to buy American. Uh, uh, yeah. and, and actually, this, this broadcast is, uh, you know, it's, uh, we were taping this. It'll be, it'll be aired sometime in the future. So it'll be aired sometime uh towards the end of december uh but um but definitely i'm a big proponent if you can you know buy american stuff and and i try and do that i agree uh but i jump in my ford automobile every single day and i love it i think it's one of the best cars made and i'm a big proponent to support our economy and support our local jobs and most importantly support our small businesses Absolutely. Okay, well, look at uh, Robert. We are coming up to, again to another break. I don't know where this time goes so quickly. I want to come back with you after the break and talk a little bit about some of the software that you use and how you actually uh, manage this connectivity between your organization and the customers that you serve. So, again, we're on with uh, Robert Fox, CEO of PeopleSource uh, International. Robert, once again, how can people get a hold of you? Um, well, our website is peoplesourceinternational.com, or they can call us at 855-774-2013. Okay, fantastic. Mike Manahan, BizRap Radio, and we will be back right after these messages. Stay with us. And welcome back to BizRap Radio, your host, Michael Manahan. Uh, of course, the show all about small business and entrepreneurs. And we are on the line talking to uh, Robert Fox. Robert is the CEO of PeopleSource International. Uh, his company provides a number of services. Uh, and if you've, if you've just joined us, I'm going to give Robert again. Robert, very quickly, the three services that you provide to your customers. Sure. So there's, it's basically three different areas. One is our virtual assistant group, which handles everything from accounting to helping you with your social media to doing, managing your CRM. Um, our second group is our contact center where we do outbound telemarketing as well as inbound call center applications. And then our third group would be um, our web and app development group. Okay, so so let's talk a little bit about platforms. Uh, I, I'm presuming things are, uh, like you mentioned, a CRM system as an example. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I presume you're using something that's uh, web-based or Internet-based? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so first of all, our phone system is kind of, kind of our superstar in, in our company. It drives everything, and it's, it's web-based, um, well, I mean, it's sitting in a colo facility in uh, downtown Los Angeles. Um, we've got a couple of servers down there, and that's where our phone system is. And then all of our employees, including myself, have Cisco phones on our desk that log into that. And the phone system does everything from keeping track of when the employees actually log in, when they log out, how much time they're actually spending, um, records client calls, both on our outbound and inbound um, group, and just really ties everything together within our company. And then we have some also off-the-shelf or you know, third-party platforms that we use internally for our operations. One is a project management tool, which is called Team PM. And it's um, fairly inexpensive. If you run groups, it's a great way to keep track if you're working on a particular project or something. And so we use that for our clients um, that have projects that they need us to help them manage with. And then our second 
our, uh, well, our third tool is Infusionsoft. So we use Infusionsoft internally. And if you don't know what Infusionsoft is, and I'm not going to give a commercial form because I you know, have no skin in the game. I'm not an Infusionsoft uh, representative. But they do, Infusionsoft allows us to do email marketing campaigns. It has our entire database in it. It also allows us to do all of our e-commerce uh, transfers, or not just e-commerce, but all, all, really all of our clients' data, sensitive data, is in our Infusionsoft campaign. Well, well, so I'm, those are the three primary tools. I'm actually very familiar with Infusionsoft, and uh, I'll give you, a, <clears throat> or I'll give a shout out to Infusionsoft. I think it is an, an excellent, uh, a, an excellent product. Although I will just, uh, just advise any of our listeners: do beware because they have some, some quirky uh, customer relation policies. And I had a client of mine that was in an, in an adult oriented business, nothing illegal mm. whatsoever, but just an adult oriented business. And uh, they were using Infusionsoft, and all of a sudden one day Infusionsoft cut them off. That was it. Like n uh, your your account is absolutely shut down. And uh, they got a letter from Infusion from some senior person at Infusionsoft saying your business is disgusting and you're you're terrible, dirty, foul people. Oh and, my! Yeah, really kind of weird. So if you wow, <laughs> you know, it, 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 yeah, it was kind of strange. But but the product itself is very good. So so the nice thing about something. So like if you're it, in the film industry up in the uh, up in the valley in uh, Los Angeles, you might not want to get into Infusionsoft, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and it wasn't even that, that bad. I mean, this company was involved with nudists. They were a company that oh. basically served, uh, you know, their customers were people who were nudists. That was about the, the oh. thing, you know. Oh. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, okay. but the nice thing about these softwares is uh, if you have something like Infusionsoft, I guess your people can access it and the client can access it. So you both have access Correct. to the same information the same data. Now, you know, Robert, yeah. something I have trouble with, I, have a, I, I use a CRM system. It's not Infusionsoft, but it's, it's a web-based system. Um, mm -hmm. I probably have in my briefcase 75 business cards that I've collected in the last three months at various events and meetings I've been at. Uh, and and, I, right. I, and I, I keep saying, you know what, I'm going to sit down one night while I'm watching TV or something and enter all of these business cards into my CRM system, but I never seem to get mm -hmm. around to it. Is that something you could help with? Oh, my gosh, are you kidding? That is like one of the easiest things for us to help you with. So here's what you do, Mike, and I'll do this, to, I'll do this for you for free. Okay. Wow. You take those 75 business cards you have, and you either photocopy them or scan them, whichever's easier for you, and then email them if you're scanning them or fax them to us if you're photocopying them. And we will then digitize those for you and put them in an Excel sheet, and then you can upload them to your um, server. What we do internally is, because I'm just like you, I go to a lot of events and I always collect business cards because I love to just stay in contact with other entrepreneurs that are doing interesting things. What we do though is first day back from the event, I always photocopy those, send them over to our team, and then they get an email that it was great meeting you yesterday, let's stay in touch. And having that immediate response really is really important because we all meet so many people so often that you just forget. Yeah, well, and, but, and it's time constraints and everything. Uh, you, you know, Robert, sure. I, 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 this is really great stuff, and I'm, I'm encouraging people, please reach out to um, People Source International. Check out and see what they can do for you. But let's talk just very quickly before we have to go. Let's talk about cost because, again, we're talking small businesses. We're talking entrepreneurs. Right. Oftentimes, uh, we're capital constrained. There's so many things we'd like to do, but we don't have a lot of money. Um, do, you, do you charge on an hourly basis? Do you charge on a flat fee basis? Uh, can you give me just an example just so that people could get an Absolutely. idea? Absolutely. Very, very easy. I can give you an example on, on cost structures. So we have three basic platforms depending upon where somebody is in their business. We have our starter package, which is up to two hours a day, and a package like that, so you're talking about, you multiply that by 22, 44 hours in a month. 
it's $497 a month, so just under $500 a month. Then we have our part-time package, which is four hours a day. And so again, depending upon where you are in your business and what you need somebody to do for you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to vary which package is going to be best for you. And that is just um, $797 a month. Or we have our full-time package, which is up to 173 hours. It's 22 times 8. That's about what it works out to. And that is $1,497 a month, so $1,497 a month for a full-time employee. So let's, and let's just go in mind. So, sorry, Robert. Keeping let, in let, mind, though, when, when you're hiring people source, hmm. you're not hiring one person. You're hiring a whole team of people to work for you. So that's your project manager. That's your, your guys that are going to be doing your task for you. And then that's also backup assistance. So that's a whole package. Unlike hiring somebody where you have to do all the compliance things, plus you have to get office space and all the other costs of bringing employees in. That's all packaged into that. So let's go back to the very first. The basic package was, was it $495? Yeah, $497. $497. So basically for $500. So $500, mm-hmm. you, you can have somebody that they've got their own equipment uh, that you're going to take care of. I don't have to worry about hiring and firing and all the rest, and I can have somebody for a couple right. hours a day. Well, how much increased and improved productivity could we have with an extra – with with help an extra couple hours a day somebody helping us that sounds fabulous just this is great i i think i'm going to look into this i might i might just become one of your clients robert well awesome we'd love to have you on mike well let's talk about that hey look at we're coming to the end of this segment we've got to go uh this has been so interesting and so exciting be, before we leave though I, I, if it's okay i'd like to just extend one free invitation to to your listeners and that is if there's anybody that's in their business and they think this might work out for them and they'd like to talk to me, I'd be happy to give them a free consultation of up to a conditional half an hour. So if that's something that you're interested in, Mike gave, or I gave out my phone number earlier, you can go onto our website and, and sign up for that. But feel free to call me just to, to, to mull over where your business is, where you're at, and if this would be a good solution for you. Okay, fantastic. You have it from the man, Robert Fox, People Source International. It's your host, Mike Manahan, BizRap Radio, and we'll be back right after these messages. And welcome back to BizRap Radio. It's your host, Michael Manahan, and that uh, was a really interesting conversation with Robert Fox, the CEO of PeopleSource. You might want to check that out. A great idea if you are a small business person and you know, maybe need some more help around your business, but you just are not at the stage where you maybe can bring on a full-time employee or you you may want to bring on that full-time employee, but you don't want the hassle of dealing with recruiting uh, managing that employee, handling issues such as raises, workers' comp, uh, uh, unemployment insurance, and all the rest of the regulatory issues you have to contend with as a business owner. So PeopleSource.com uh, is a, an, op- an option. It's something you can use to outsource uh, the people that work for you to another company who takes care of all of the headaches, and all you get is just somebody to do the work. It's a great idea. Check it out, peoplesource.com. Okay, let, now let's, uh, you know, we continue to have an ongoing discussion on BizRap Radio about government regulation. And the latest one that uh, I want to talk about is the requirement that restaurants post calorie counts on all of their food. And it, it, it's, is, is it a good idea to have calorie counts? I mean, should people be aware of how much calories are in a side of fries, a milkshake, a, uh, a hamburger? And, you know, in, in the scheme of things, it's, it probably is a good idea. If, if uh, uh, people want to stay healthy, they've got to control their eating. About 30% of the U.S. population is significantly overweight, weight, borderline obese. And uh, yeah, the and I understand the regulators on this issue, the FDA, 
the idea is, hey, look, if we post calorie counts on all of the food, these big, huge, fat people are going to look at the calorie count and they are going to either consume less of the food item that they're consuming or alternatively, perhaps they will opt to order a food item that has less calories. And, and so from that perspective, I think that it's 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 a great idea. But again, is this something that should be mandated by government or is this something that should be left to, I don't know, to not own a combination of free enterprise businesses who perhaps want to publish calorie counts and and individual consumers who really should be making themselves informed. Now, the calorie counting is not new and all you need to do is search uh on a, a, a just on a google search and you know calorie counts uh, calories of different food products any google search and you will come up with literally hundreds of websites that have information on calories and on how many calories are in different foods so if somebody is really interested in reducing their calorie intake, let's say you're obese, let's say you're fat, you want to lose some weight, uh, and let's say you know absolutely nothing about calories, which really seems odd in this day and age that anybody cannot know anything about calories. I mean, all you have to do is go to the grocery store and there are little booklets uh, counting calories. There are articles in the food magazines about uh, uh, eating calorie reduced foods. I know in the food section of the Los Angeles Times, you're constantly seeing articles about uh, how to reduce uh, calories. Uh, there are cookbooks on on eating light. Uh, it 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 really seems to me amazing uh, that there are obese people out there who don't understand that food has calories, and the more calories you consume, guess what? The fatter you're going to get. So if you want to uh, get rid of some of that fat, you need to cut down on the calories. Uh, and, and so the FDA's uh, forced restaurants and. Uh, including many fast food restaurants. And by the way, a lot of those fast food restaurants, you think of McDonald's or you think of uh, Burger King or Subway Sandwich, you think of these as being large chains. But in fact, they operate under the franchise model, which means that, uh, yeah, there may be some stores owned by the corporation, but there's also a lot of stores who are owned by entrepreneurs, people who own one, two, three, four stores. Uh, I met a mellow, uh, fellow from uh, the Midwest somewhere, and you know, in, in his particular town, he owned the Wendy's, he owned the Burger King, and he owned the Subway restaurant. It's not unusual for these businesses to be owned uh, by small entrepreneurs, yet uh, these small entrepreneurs are going to have to go and provide calories counts and are providing calorie counts on all of their food items uh, for those people who are too uh, ignorant or too lazy to bother to try and figure out how many calories are in these various foods. Now, you know, why is this an issue? You know, so what? Why, why should restaurants uh, you know, carry calorie counts? Well, uh, for a number of reasons. One is it, it's an administrative burden. Uh, you've got to figure out how many calories are in each food item. And you you can't do that yourself, uh, so this is not something where the individual restaurant owner is going to have any expertise. So what do you have to do? You have to hire experts. Now, whether it's McDonald's or Burger King, uh, it doesn't matter. You have to hire experts who assess what the calorie counts are in the food items that you serve. But it's not quite so simple because calorie counts can actually change depending upon the ingredients. Uh, so, you know, what happens if, uh, I don't know, your standard hamburger, you decide to use a different kind of mayonnaise or a different kind of sauce, or maybe your meat supplier changes and you now have a, a different beef supplier and that beef, uh, the new supplier has a little more or a little less fat content. I mean, calorie counts can be changed by a host of things, preservatives, uh, tenderizers, things that you use in your food to make your food more palatable. Well, every time you make a change in your recipe, oh my gosh, you have to do a new calorie count, which means hiring the calorie count experts to assess how many calories are in the food that you're serving. And of course, like anything, if you have a regulation, 
guess what? The government's going to enforce it. Why is the government going to enforce it? Well, because every time they find somebody who's not following the rules, it's an opportunity for a fine. That's right. It's fees to the government to pay for the bureaucracy that they're imposing on all of us. So, okay, so you've got your four or five restaurants. One of your employees puts up Uh, 760 calories for the cheeseburger when it's really supposed to be 670 calories. In comes the regulator from the federal, uh, from the FDA. And the next thing you know, the Food and Drug Administration. And the next thing you know, you've got a big fine right in your lap. And the worst part is, is all of the studies that the government has done and that independent uh, universities and research institutes have done suggest that those people who are overeating, eating too much, eating too much fatty food, in fact, are not changing their diets one bit from those calorie counts. No, believe it or not, they're not running into the burger joint looking at all the calorie counts and then choosing the thing that's got the least amount of calories on the menu. No, if they're used to eating three Big Macs, they're going to continue to eat three Big Macs. So all of this administrative burden on businesses and small businesses, many of them, and to ill and no effect. Another example of government overreach, government making it more difficult for small uh, businesses to operate. Uh, And, of course, uh, where does it stop? Where do we end up? Uh, What else are they going to think of regulating next? And it it increases the cost. It increases the cost of compliance. Of course, that means uh, uh, operators of businesses are going to put their prices up in order to comply with these rules and regulations. And at the end of the day, the rules and regulations really aren't doing a lot Anyway, and 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 further, anybody who really wants to know the calorie counts of foods, go, go to the internet, do a Google search. Everybody's got access to the internet, and you can get the calorie count on everything from an egg to an avocado to a slice of roast beef. It's all there. Mayonnaise. I mean, we know what the things that are heavy in calories, uh, and and the people who don't know that you know what they really don't care. And that's the bottom line as I see it here at BizRap Radio. It's uh, your host, Michael Manahan. We are, of course, BizRap Radio. And here at BizRap Radio, we believe we can fix the United States of America through a fundamental concept that individuals pursuing their own economic interests in free markets will create more prosperity for more people that can ever be achieved through government regulation and a planned economy. It's BizRap Radio fixing America through individual economic freedom, and we appreciate so much you listening to us. It is again your host, Michael Manahan, BizRap Radio. We'll be back again next week with another edition.